how to be the hero of your story i started myself as a sidekick and i was like terrified i was like you know why is he even asking me this hey guys uh, this is the vishwas mudga show and i'm super excited to have you guys here this is a format that i always wanted to do it's been about a couple of years that i always wanted to do my own podcast similar to the lines of the ask vishwas show that was there on youtube which i was doing addressing the questions of professional students and also people from various walks of life and this is a format that we are going to follow here as well something that we are going to deep dive into various aspects of professional and then personal life where we are going to deep dive into some of these key aspects that is going to create a winning formula for your life at every juncture be it a student life be it a professional life or be it something that in your family life we going to focus on how we can come across as a hero of our own lives Okay, that brings us to the first topic of the whole podcast that uh, I have planned for you guys: how to be the hero of your story and not a sidekick. That is the whole point. And people think that uh, you know it's easy to become a hero of your own story, but the problem with that is that in the multitudes of population and people all around you, you just forget that. you are the center of the universe and it's so easy to get carried on by the rules that have been set by the society for you or the kind of principles or the guidelines that people have set for you at your workplace or in your school or in your college or in your family it's just easy to basically think that okay i'm just one of the cogs in the giant machine that is this world and then you just keep following it right but if you look at it in a perspective i believe that the right way of leading your life is to believe you are the hero of your story and not a sidekick and i want to talk about a few things how you can approach this whole aspect and come across as the hero of your own story so let's start by something that I want to personally take you through my own journey how I started my life what I did in my early childhood and how I was and uh, going back to my childhood one thing that uh, you know you guys might be surprised because you know currently I'm like a motivation speaker I uh, I love public speaking I go and speak everywhere and I I feel great about speaking publicly right but my uh, big issue when I was into uh, Uh, early childhood was i was myself a sidekick i started myself as a sidekick and i was shy i was introvert and uh, my, my parents were like constantly worried on how to basically get me out of my shell i was like in this shell i couldn't even come out of it and uh, i was always scared to basically speak in front of people i could i would never go out and play in the Uh, on streets out there or i would just um, have troubles even speaking up in school in the class basically asking me a question okay so my parents really got worried so one day they asked me to go to a personality development camp and uh, when i went there the coach the personality development coach he asked me basically to do one simple thing he asked me to go out there on the street and then stop the first guy you see on a motorcycle and then ask him for a direction to your school and i was like terrified i was like you know why is he even asking me this i said why can't i just ask somebody who is like a shopkeeper or somebody who's you know just standing on the street and why i should stop somebody who's coming on a motorcycle he said no this is something that you have to do so go and do it and uh, people are watching me from the far and then i mustered my courage and I stopped somebody and I actually asked and this guy who actually stops and he got super pissed with me and uh, still remember I was terrified but 
it was once I asked a question and then he even answered the question uh, in a very very uh, uh, kind of rude way. He asked and he answered and he just left. But once he answered the question, you should see the confidence that I had got. You know, I had got this confidence that I had never known in my entire life. Okay, that was to basically stand up and have the audacity to go and stop a uh, you know a rider who's maybe going on some kind of a busy schedule, right? And basically stopping him and asking him something. That kind of triggered something in me, and then the whole uh, the personality development camp kind of uh, pushed me towards becoming somebody. Who was much more than just a introvert, okay? And I started looking at uh, life in a different format altogether. I had a lot of confidence, and uh, I wanted to carry that confidence forward. Then one of these days, what happened was uh, uh, there was a you know my school had a really good basketball team, and there were auditions going on. And then I felt that okay, I want to go, you know. Go to this uh, the auditions and then I went for the auditions and then because it is I just wanted to become a basketball player and I felt that okay it's it's really cool to be a basketball player because I used to see all these people cheering for them in, in a match or it, it's something amazing okay it's something about basketball just pulled me towards it I wanted to become a basketball player and uh, so I mustered the courage and I went and uh, I went for the auditions. And then the coach he saw me, and then he he was like, Vishwas Mudgal, what are you doing here? This this game is not for you. I mean, I was like a very frail and thin guy, and he was like, you know, this game is not for you. And uh, maybe you should go and you know do your drawing and other academic stuff and stuff. You know, he was talking like that, and uh, I got really discouraged, and I felt that okay, why is the coach talking to me like this? And in, in spite of all that, I still went ahead and you know uh, he asked me to run a couple of rounds of the ground and come back, which I did. And by the time I come back after two rounds, I was like fainting. I couldn't even walk. I was about to faint. And then the coach tells me, "Hey, Mudgal, uh, take this ball and shoot in the hoop." And I was trying to like shoot and. The balls, you know, basically the ball couldn't even touch the hoop or the board. It was terrible, and there were so many students around me. And then uh, the coach is like, you know, basketball is not for you. Just, just please go home. That's what he told. And my God, my whole life came to like a standstill that day. I was shattered. I was like broken, basically. But when I went home and I was crying, and then. Uh, I still remember my parents. They were like, you know, why are you crying? And then I told them what happened. So I still remember my dad and even my mom telling me that, see, you like basketball. So what is more important? Being you, you being in the team is more important, or you becoming or becoming a player, or you playing basketball is more important. So then I told them, playing basketball is more important. So that's when my Parents told me that you play bad basketball, you get better at basketball. It doesn't matter if you are in a team or not. You know, that is like a byproduct. The fact is, you need to enjoy basketball. This is something that you need to enjoy. So, something you know kind of resonated with me. Although I was really hurt, it resonated with me, and then I started playing basketball from that day. And uh, um, I, I I took it very seriously. I started practicing and all that. And then I got really good at it. And uh, the next year, when I uh, when I, the same auditions were happening for the school team, in the same coach he called me and then he was like, "Hey, Vishwas, you know, why don't you come and you know come for the auditions?" And I went for the auditions and uh, the auditions went pretty well, right? And I was very excited because the same coach who had practically told me that you know you cannot really be a basketball player same guy was calling me and he was asking me that way why don't you come and take it because uh, i had become that good because you know i had really practiced so much so after like a couple of weeks they had put up the uh, you know the, the i still remember the the team you know the entire uh, list of the team 
in the on the notice board and there was a lot of people like standing and they were looking at okay, who was who's been in which team and stuff like that and then i went and saw that and then uh, i saw the list and i was my friends were like really shocked and then they even looked at me and i still remember that day when they saw the list and then everybody was there and then they saw the captain name and in place of the captain's name what was written was vishwas patil and i was like what the hell happened here how can i be the captain okay so that was like the changing point turning point in my life when i realized that what really matters is that once you have figured out your passion you really practice it you really become good at it and that's when things start happening for you okay don't just go by what the world tells you okay because the world is always going to tell you hey you are not good at basketball you are not good at drawing you are not good at public speaking you are not good at math you are not good at something you are terrible at something you will never become anything people are always telling you how you are not a hero and how you are a sidekick for the rest of your life from the beginning to the end of your life people are going to tell you the same thing but if you understand what is your passion if you understand what you are really good at then you for the love of that you basically continue pursuing it and you get better at it you become great at it right the same world the same people who actually try to put you down now come back and then start giving you accolades and awards and making you the school captain or tomorrow you will become like even the prime minister of this country and god knows what right so that is what the um, the world is all about it always ridicules you and then it always ridic- you know once you have overcome that fear of being rejected by the public and by family and friends and everybody and you come up in life that's when the world celebrates you it also people also say that today's mad man is tomorrow's hero that's what they say but what people want you to be is not important what you want you to be is important and the best way to look at life is you have to be in the center of life you have to be the hero of your life and no matter what anybody tells you you need to understand that it's okay to listen to what they say maybe take it as you know a great with a grain of salt and you know basically you understand uh, you take their suggestions and then you move on and then you basically become good and then you believe that uh, you have come on this earth to do something awesome okay and then you don't have to like believe what they are saying but rather than you need to believe yourself so in this next section we are going to focus on the most important aspect the three step process of how you can become the hero of your story this podcast is powered by goodworks cowork goodworks cowork is bangalore's number one coworking space log on to www.goodworks.in for all your coworking and managed office requirements and this is something that i'm going to tell you a full proof formula that has worked beautifully for me and it continues to work step number 1 be shameless and experiment you must be wondering what am i telling you guys but you got to be bindas and then you have to experiment no matter what no matter what the world is going to tell you or the people around you are going to tell you be it your family your friends your girlfriend boyfriend uh, wife husband your parents or your children or whatever it is even in your office it doesn't matter you have to basically be shameless be thick skinned and you have to experiment one of the most common question i get from everybody most of the people on my instagram linkedin uh, youtube anywhere people are asking me vishwas how to find my passion okay i tell people these days that passion is overrated forget about passion i ask them a very simple thing find what you are good at find what you love that is most important so how do you do that 
the most important thing you should do is you need to experiment go and do five things 10 things out there okay experiment when you are in school college i did a, a, a bunch of things i did like fashion modeling i i was a teenage entrepreneur i uh, you know uh, you know wrote uh, you know, essays you know i was to do some kind of literary stuff as well and i was a placement coordinator you know basically organizing these events and everything i was trying to figure out okay what am i good at okay so much so my dad used to call me like aram bishul so basically somebody who just starts a lot of these things and never completes them you know i used to feel even sad and i used to feel bad even when my dad is telling me those things but he was right and today i am whatever i am because i didn't care about what really people would say and i still kept experimenting but then later i started finding things that i was good at i found out one i was good at entrepreneurship i had a knack to basically identify opportunities and convert them into reality and number two i accidentally fell in love with writing also that's how i became like an author i could never do that wouldn't have ever done it except for the fact that i experimented in spite of all the odds i had gone bankrupt i didn't even have a single penny in my account i didn't know what to do next i still remember in spite of all of that i just wanted to write a story of basically somebody who's in my position and just quits everything and goes on this journey across india and one day i started writing and um, one day uh, sonia my wife she comes and she sees my uh, manuscript and then she looks at me and she's like this is horrible <laughs> this is like it's practically really bad you know you are good at many things but writing is not your cup of tea you should just stop it you will not believe i felt so bad my world had come to an end that day <laughs> practically come to an end and i was thinking i'm never gonna, never going to write again so i stopped writing i stopped writing and never went back to writing so one week two week three weeks and this book is calling me back calling me back complete the book complete the book complete the book It's this kind of a pull so i started thinking a kind of you know one of the one of the um, other strengths that i have is that i introspect at every juncture of my life i have an ability to reflect internally and externally both so i reflected internally i kind of uh, introspected and i was thinking why am i feeling bad you know somebody is telling me that you know you, you're not good at writing why am i feeling bad that's when another incident came into my mind so this was uh, one of the wedding ceremonies it was my sister in law's wedding and then people told me that i have to give a dance performance so i started thinking Okay, so I'll give a dance performance. I said, okay, I'll give a dance performance. And people, you know, kind of uh, made me to practice and everything like that. So we practiced. And uh, on the day of the ceremony, I gave a performance. After the ceremony, after the performance, everybody came to me, and then they told me, Vishwas, promise me one thing: you will never dance again. You will never dance again. And you know what I did, basically. I laughed. I laughed so much because, uh, you know, it was it was hilarious. Okay, the way I danced, it, it, the whole whole thing was just hilarious. And uh, when I look back, when I think about it, when somebody tells me I suck at uh, dancing, and I laugh, but when somebody tells me I suck at writing, my world comes to an end. Why is it? That is because I had fallen in love with writing. that day i decided that me as a writer is going to write for me as an audience and i'm not going to write to please anybody else i'm going to do because i want to do it so now in the whole process of writing uh, or or finding your passion or what you're good at right this is what it is you experimented and then you did a lot of these things you did dancing you started it and then people laughed at it and then you also laughed at it it was a joke and you carried on 
but you fell in love with writing somebody told me that some you are not good at it but it hurt you number one indication when you get hurt do a introspection to why you are getting hurt that may be because you are falling in love with uh, that particular aspect it could be dancing or in in my case it was writing whatever it is so this is a good formula so i usually i came up with the formula love plus hurt equals to amazing things okay this is something that i came up with and it is hold good even now and uh, so whenever there is you know you feel that you are hurt because of something introspect and maybe you fall in love with something so number one what the number one step in the process was that you need to experiment but for the end of this experimentation so you want to find out what you love and what you're good at that is important see somebody tells you that you basically um you know are good at something and then you you yourself know that this is a skill that you know i i really excel so that is something that you need to pursue so number 2 is you need to become good at something the step number 2 is to become good at something number 1 is to experiment and find what you love and good at and number 2 the step number 2 is to make sure that you convert that good to great good to great is the second step when you identify what you are good at you have to focus on how you need to become better or great and you need to set small milestones for yourself continuously evaluate yourself keep getting better it should be like a continuous feedback loop like every day you need to get better and better every day you need to practice if it could be your like a side gig also it could be like need not be your main gig right it could be like your side gig a part time job or your passion that you are following in your like uh, free time like how i am like a although writing is my parallel career i am like a very erratic writer i'm like a weekend writer or like you know i write during the day i'm like the entrepreneur and during the night i'm a writer okay so you need to find time for your passions that is important all right step number 2 is that and step number 3 is basically that whole thing converts into like your passion and that passion has to start making money that's what i always believe in if your passion does not make money then there is a problem so step number 3 is passion to money that is important i am being very practical here a lot of people might advise you tell you that okay you know it's important that you need to follow your passion it's it's money is a secondary thing you know but i back to differ there are something definitely you do just for yourself and then you are like trying to do it just not because of any financial gain which is okay which is perfectly fine like you know for example that now i write my books but i'm not doing it for any financial gain i do it just for myself because i love to do it but that has given me immense reach in the market that has made me a better person in terms of how i express myself how i tell my stories and in my career as an entrepreneur that comes very much handy okay so because of that i am able to indirectly monetize my passion as an you know like a writer uh, into my business career into my entrepreneurial career okay and today i am able to do these podcasts and all the other things that i'm trying to do right now that i also like an influencer only because i am an author and i am able to tell stories that people are able to listen and then take meaningful outcomes out of it and implement it in their lives all this comes because of you know my passion to be a storyteller okay so directly or indirectly your passion has to yield results that is something that is important so the step 3 process is something that you need to focus on on basically making your passion yield a lot of results this passion could be anything your software engineering it could be uh, ai that you want to do it could be some kind of blockchain thing that you want to create or it could be like some organic food that you want to um, create or some pet uh, product that you want to create for the pets or it could be a satellite that you want to launch it could be a uh, uh, music that you want to 
perceive in your you know, career. It could be if you want to be like an actor in the OTT series, right? Or whatever it is. So, but it's very very important that you do this three step process. One, you experiment. You really be shameless. You, you experiment and find what you are good at. Number two, basically you are trying to convert, go from good to great. So you're trying to like work continuously to be able to be damn good at what you love. Okay, that is important. Number three, you are trying to convert your passion into into money and some a meaningful career as well for you. Either it is a primary career or it is a parallel career, but you are trying to do it. And remember that rich dad, poor dad kind of a thing. What it tells you that the more sources of income you have, the better it is for you. So the passions that you have got could create this multiple sources of income for you. That is going to strengthen you as a personality, as as somebody who is going to be a hero of your life, and who you going to control uh, your uh, future, your destiny. A person who has got multiple sources of income, multiple sources of social security always comes up in life always is a hero of their own lives so that is something that you need to understand and uh, this is a very very practical take of how i have done it okay i don't know how other people have done it but i know how i have done it so this is how i have done it and i continue to do it. i do a lot of experiments and i fail a lot and not afraid of failure okay and one of the key things that happened to me is i failed very early in my career and then because i failed early in my career that kind of gave me this immunity to fear of failure i think i'm really lucky in that aspect but uh, fail fast approach is very important fail fail like 100 times it, it, it doesn't matter that gives you a, a way to succeed massively massively so do not be afraid of failure go ahead and follow this three step process to be the hero of your story and do not forget to write to me i am on all the social media platforms uh, instagram linkedin uh, twitter youtube and all the podcasts as well write to me tell me how you are able to convert your life into something meaningful how you are able to find your passion if you need any help in pursuing your passion you need any help in identifying your passion write to me and uh, i am going to do my best in answering those uh, questions in the podcast that are happening uh, in the in the coming days and i am also going to be getting a lot of uh, my listeners on the show as well so if you want to be a part of this podcast please feel free to write to me and uh, i'm going to be responding and uh, thank you so much for listening to me today and we going to catch up very very shortly next week uh, with you on The Vishwas Mudgal Show. Thank you so much. This podcast is powered by GoodWorks Angel Fund. GoodWorks Angel Fund is India's leading early stage VC fund. And for all the entrepreneurs and startups out there, log on to goodworksvc.in for your funding requirements.